Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a colorful episode of your favorite podcast out there. If it's not your favorite, it's going to be your favorite. And that's come on now. I'm your illustrious host slash moderator, Don. Don't get me confused with Don King. My hair is a lot more lavish. Uh, shout out to Renee when I saw her yesterday to get prepared for this week's episode. Uh, that being said, I'm going to introduce you guys to my comrades. Uh, Nick, take it away. Yo, baby, yo, baby, yo. It's your boy wow. Nick on the <laughs> mic. Y'all already know how I'm coming. Hey, three times CFL champ, former NFL player, arena football, and Division One basketball player for three years. I started a little bit, did my thing, and I ran a 4-2. I'm freaking fast. I played college basketball, but I went professional football. So I know a little bit about basketball, football, a little bit about everything in sports, and I'm here to um, talk more about it. Let's go. Be rolling. Did this guy really wear a Lakers hat? Hey, you know he what? Bought you a, he bought a Lakers hat. Hey, Rudy, you said have some balls, have some nuts. Guess what? Yo, Tango, El Gato, Los Pantalones. You have, Lakers, a cat in your, you have a cat in your pants? Lakers are going to the championship. I said it here first. I'm putting it all on the line. I'm putting can, my can nuts get, on the line. Why, why, why are you can still in the stick? Oh, can we get through intros? Thank you. Can What's we get going on, intros? everyone? My name is Rudy Rodriguez Shomai. I am Nick's former travel coach. I'm the reason he was decent at basketball. Um, and I'm the reason he got a college scholarship. Nah, I'm just kidding. Lawton Williams, the head coach at Northern, was the reason. And I want to give them a quick shout out because the Northern Vikings won their seventh state championship last week. I went to the game up in Lakeland, Florida. <clears throat> Great experience. Watch these boys play their worst half of the season in the first half. Yet they were only down by three, and it was bad. They, that first half was as bad as it gets. And you're sitting here saying, if they just play their game, they win this game by 15, 20 points. They played a much better second half, and they walked away with a 61-48 win to capture their seventh state title, their first since 2015. So shout out, congrats to Norland. Also congrats to Columbus High School with the, the, the Boozer Twins. They pulled their third straight state title in class – 7A, and uh, they knocked off Orlando Oak Ridge, who was 27 and three, and was ranked number nine in the country. It was an amazing game. I watched it actually on a. Str I was streaming it on my phone while I was at UFC 299 on Saturday. It went into overtime. Oak Ridge was up two with like 15 seconds left. For some reason, they didn't double Cameron Boozer, and he basically took the lane right down the middle, two hand dunked it, and Oak Ridge missed a three in and out at the buzzer. It went to overtime and Columbus won 72 to 67, I believe. So congratulations to both of them. Back to you. Awesome. Don. Shout out to them. Shout out. Shout out to those teams that succeeded. To the young men that didn't succeed. You have a lot of life to live. A lot of life to live. Uh, with that being said, we're going to go into our first topic. I'm not going to break it down into subsections. We're going to just, you know, put the umbrella on it. Women's college basketball. My comrade Rudy has a lot to say, <laughs> a lot to say about college women's basketball. All I'm going to say is there's no denying it's probably like the most exciting thing to watch right now on TV is women's college basketball. That's my only only thing to add. Go ahead, Rudy. Go ahead, Nick. What, what, are, you, what are you thinking about women's college basketball right now? Well, um, I thought we were going to start with football first, but I can jump right into women's college basketball. Works for me because I've been watching a lot of women's college basketball. And, you know, Caitlin Clark broke the record uh, last, a week and a half ago to become the all-time Division I scoring leader in men and women's ball. So shout out to Caitlin Clark. She also won her third straight Big Ten championship. Um, they beat Nebraska in overtime, a game that they were down seven with like, a, with like two minutes to go. Tied the game. She hit some ridiculous shots. Her first half was abysmal. She Ooh. had four. Caitlin Clark. No, no, she I had, said, woo. Yeah, Ooh. she was she was terrible. She had four points at halftime. I think she was 0 for 8 from 3 or something like 0 for 9 from 3 in the first half. But shooters keep shooting. And she went bananas in the second half. She had 30 in the second half. Um, I believe she had five threes. I mean, some of the threes that she hit were – I mean, those are men, those are man threes. Like when I say she makes men watch, it's because she does stuff that men do. Cause I don't see any other women taking shots like she's taking. It's, it's, it's remarkable to see. 
to watch, you know, <clears throat> comparing that, 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 that Nebraska Iowa game and the finesse in which they play that game. And then you watch the next game and um, you watch South Carolina and LSU have a football game. I mean, that game was a physical, physical ass game. I think Nick actually watched the entire thing because I told him to. <laughs> um, but that game actually probably shouldn't have happened without the help of the Tennessee head coach who decided to not guard um, Cardoso, Camila Cardoso at the three-point line with 1.1 seconds to go. Had no one guarding the inbound pass from side court 60 feet from the rim. So there was no nothing in the way of Raven Johnson to inbound the ball. She throws it to Cardoso, who's wide open by 15 feet. I mean, if you wanted to play defense like that, you could have sat on the bench. That's how bad that defense was. And Cardoso turns, faces, and banks a three off the top from the top of the key to win the game. And this is, mind you, after Tennessee missed two free throws with 3.4 seconds to go. So, like, everything that could go wrong in that those final 3.4 seconds, I mean, that coach, I don't know that you could look your players in the face after that. That said, that game on Sunday was a fight. Literally. Literally. <laughs> At the end of that, if you didn't see that game, there was a, a, a little fracas. I wouldn't call it a brawl because people use the word brawl. A brawl is the malice in the palace. That was not a brawl. That was one girl flexes. And this is the funny part. One girl flex. They, they, Flage, oh. Johnson, a, Flage Johnson commits an intentional foul, clear intentional foul. She mm -hmm. grabs the girl from behind, spins her around. One of the teammates comes and flexes right in front of her. She doesn't touch her. She flexes on her. It happens every single day in men's basketball. And no one, no. nobody gets throat, nobody gets throat checked. She throat checked this girl. She shoved her off in the throat area. If, Dray, if, if Draymond Green was her teammate, she might have been in a, in a the other girl might have been in a choke. Um, instead, Carmelo Cardoso basically body blocks Flage Johnson into the ground, and the bench is clear, which means everyone's getting ejected. Flage Johnson's brother jumps from the first row of the stands mid court, jumps over the scorer's table. Shoves the big girl Cardoso out of the way. He gets arrested. He's still in jail as of yesterday. I don't know if he's been bailed out yet. I thought Flage had enough NIL money she could bail her brother out of jail. I don't know. Um, but he he was in jail as of yesterday still, from what I saw. Now, what I don't like is that they they turn this into I don't it, you know, they turn this into something that it really like this is what the fourth quarter there was one foul called each way until that play. One foul, and they were hacking the crap out of each other. The referees allowed this game to go the direction it goes. When the SEC allows this type of physical play, South Carolina's physical, LSU's physical. They're going to go back and forth with each other. It also doesn't help that, you know, South Carolina's beaten them 16 straight times. So the last time LSU beat South Carolina, Angel Reese was like 10 years old. So and the reality is this all comes from two coaches that do not like each other. Don Staley and Kim Mulkey do not like each other. That's what it comes down to. And you have the flamboyant Kim Mulkey with her wild outfits and Don Staley with her hoodie. And at the end of the game, Staley apologizes for what took place, which, you know, in, in theory was classy. And, and yeah, it was a class, classy way to end it. Kim Mulkey says, I wish she would have gone after Angel Reese. <laughs> Like, what are you talking about? You've had time to think, and you go back to the locker room, and that's what comes out of your mouth, coach, and you wonder why your players do certain things. Now, I'm not sitting here absolving anything that South Carolina has done or do, or you know does or has done, and I mean, Dawn Staley has had her share of controversial moments and things that she has said. I think they're very similar in terms of the style and who they are, but – you got to think about what you're saying before you say some dumb shit like Kim Mulkey said. Like, that's just ridiculous. Because on top of that, Angel Reese is 6'3". Camila Cardoso is 6'8". And she's like 250. <laughs> They're not the same size either. Um, I think it's going to make for an exciting tournament. I would love to see that game again. Could we see it in the Final Four? It's a possibility. You might see it before. You could potentially... I, I can't imagine you'd see it anywhere else but the Final Four. Because I cannot imagine that they would bracket LSU two. as a two seed two. under a bracket with South Carolina. So they'd have to be meeting up in the final four. Um, you know, if they, and, and if they do it right, that's, that's how they'll do it. They'll have them in different because LSU will be a, a number two seed. Yeah, they're a two seed. So you can't put them in the same bracket. And 
It, and and so I'd love to see that again in the final four. I tell you right now, the NCAA women's tournament has made the men's tournament invisible. Now, all that said, by the way, Nick, we watched that game. I, I this there, There's a reason that men don't like women's basketball in general. Because when you watch women miss 30 wide open layups in a game, it gets tired. The only thing that makes you watch that game is the rivalry. Because the skill level is trash. The amount of layups that I, I, we watched missed was embarrassing. And these are the two of the top five teams in the country. And that's why when you watch someone like Caitlin Clark, like that girl's just knocking stuff down from everywhere. And these, one, these, these women are, are missing layups. You're 6'8", missing layups. You're 6'5", missing layups. Like, come on now. <laughs> like, you got to make some damn layups. Like that, that, but all that said, that, that women's, the women's tournament is going to put the men's tournament, particularly in the Final Four, to bed. It's going to be watched by 15 million people. I'm sure it will beat whatever the men do. I don't know if you know, but the women's game, I believe, with uh, Ohio State and Iowa a week, week ago, b- broke, beat whatever NBA game was on that day. I think that's big, you know. But again, does it translate to the WNBA? To the WNBA? I don't think so. And finally, the one thing I want to hit on is Juju Watkins. She played like garbage. She played like garbage in the Pac-12 championship. They won by double digits. That's scary. That is a scary thought. They beat Stanford by double digits and she played like trash. So I'm excited actually about the women's tournament, to be honest. I, I, I want to, I'm going to watch it. The perfect setting is LSU, South Carolina, Iowa, and USC. If you get that final four, you got fireworks. Okay. I guess it's my turn. I think Rudy literally covered every freaking thing i don't even know what to say anymore like um because you know me like rudy just said rudy said he he called me and told me the games was on and i was already watching by the way but you know when it comes to terms to women basketball i'd rather go to the beach and count sand to then watch the games you know in my you know just how i feel about women's basketball just because like rudy say the talent the, the the athletic perspective of the game is just not there to the men's side so and they say that they play more, you know, technique, more sound basketball, but that's that's not true. There's there's a lot of things that go on in their game that just isn't beautiful to see at all. Like, um, so I like personally, I had fun watching that game because the US um USC versus LSU game. Um I had I had I had fun. I, I enjoyed watching that game because they went at it, you know, they battled, it was like a fight, it was like a brawl. But just like the talent wise of the game, it was like like Rudy said, it was a lot of missed layups. Um, the shooting wasn't good. They took four shots. They were shooting over people all over in their face. It was just wasn't beautiful to see. They was on fast break. They were blowing layups by themselves. Um, so um, when it comes to the game, they shouldn't even been in that game against LSU because the Tennessee game. What are you doing, coach? You put your head down after and discuss because you blew the game. Literally, you you messed up the game for your team. Like y'all had a chance. All you had to do was literally the person, if he's not, if the lady's not going to guard the ball, she should be guarding something else. She should be taking away the three point line. Cause they was taking the ball out of half court. There's no way in hell a girl is going to throw the ball from half court under the basket to somebody with 1.1 seconds. And they're going to make the layup in enough time that that wasn't going to happen. So you should be guarding the, the three point line or around there and make them throw the ball out, you know, anywhere besides what she just did. You, you didn't guard the ball. It didn't guard the person. Like, Two people shouldn't could have sat on the sideline next to coach, <laughs> like <laughs> rather than being on the court. It was a waste of time, waste of. They shouldn't even USC should have never been in that game in the first place. That was there, but it was fun to see. Um, what Rudy said that the girl that that happens all the time in men's sport and and they never, you know, escalate to that type of that situation. That's a darn lie. Nobody, nobody runs who's not in the play into somebody else's face. Usually when somebody gets all jumpy and brawling and, uh, and in somebody's face, it's after you dunk on somebody or after you hit a three in their face or something like that. But literally the person had nothing to do with it and came into the play on somebody else, on somebody else's behalf. Nobody does that, Rudy. So when you say that happens all the time, that doesn't happen. Not flexing, at all. Ha- flexing happens all the time. Yeah, it happens when the person, like if you're going at somebody, if I was going at you, Rudy, and I, and I crossed you or I dunked on you, then... 
then I'll, uh, I'll get in your face like Ant does all the time. You said it. You're like, Ant does it all the time. Yeah, because he made the play. Not only my other teammate made a play, I'm going to come run in your face. Nobody does that. So Flaugé had every right to, man, get the fuck out of my face. Who the fuck are you? Don't run in my face, yo. You didn't even make the play. You come in here jumping in on somebody else's crown like, oh, you didn't make the play. No, go sit your dumb ass down. And I have no problem with Flaw J did. And then Cardosa come over there, big dog bullying over there and running people over, and she just knocked her out. And I have, you know what? I have no problem with what Monkey said. I have no problem. She say, I want my big person. You come run up on my big person, and then y'all go at it. Don't just where was her? Just... Where was her big person? Her big person was hurt. She was limping off the court. She was out to play, and she already had a tech. So if she went over there and did anything, you know, she was going to get suspended. I don't know if that's what went in her mind or if she was just like, fuck it. No, she don't fuck with Flaugé Johnson. That's what ran in her mind. That's Flaugé. <laughs> she watched She watched her get, bro. She watched her get run over and then walked away. No, she was already to the side. I knew exactly where she was. She, she was, watched. She was standing up, watched okay. her get body blocked, turned around, really? and went to the bench. So, so what we talked about already before is having henchmen and having people that do all the dirty work. That's not her. That's not her job. She's a star. Somebody else supposed to do that. I don't know who's on the bench. Who? Her coach, her coach said it should have been her. Her coach said it should have been her, but that should have been her. No, it can't be her. It can't be her. Not in that situation. Said, I didn't say it. her coach said it. No, her, her, I, 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 no, said it. no. I think her coach was just saying that it should have been another big person because Flaugé is like five. Coach is just well. You know what? Five, I'm five, man. Flaugé is bigger than you. Yeah, okay, but she's, she's not baby. bigger than she's Cardo Car Cardosa, Cardosa. Cardosa is six foot ten. Yeah, she's, she's not six ten. She's six seven, six eight. She's big as hell. She ran <laughs> her over. She didn't punch her. She literally just body blocked her and yeah. made it look like she got killed. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's, that's nothing. You can't run up on somebody like that. But the yeah. one was Haley Von we tried to push Cardosa from the back. The little <laughs> tiny five six white girl. Like, Man, are you it was like a, it was like a, it was like a little. It was like a little gnat on her back. She came over. <laughs> Man, go sit your ass down. I'm glad that Cardosa and knocked her over, too. Uh, well, I, you know, I mean, I think it would have been you know. funny because actually that would have been instigated uh, by the little white girl, uh, Haley uh, Von uh, you can't, You can't run over a little white girl like that. You know, that's a crime in any any, any part of the world. You can't do that. Um, <laughs> but, Kate, listen, man, that game was good. I mean, I ain't going to lie. I watched it. I enjoyed it just because it was SEC versus SEC, and they had a battle. They don't like each other thoroughly. But the talent wise or the, the game wise, it was like, okay, I'm not so intrigued of that part. Yeah, but, this is why I don't watch it. That's why I don't watch it. But Rudy Bay, like, come on, watch, watch the game. This is what we got to do. We got to watch the girls. I was like, okay. But um, Caitlin Clark, man, let's go on to her, man. She had a horrible first half. And then she came with, like, um, I will watch because of her. I will be tuned into. Um, women's basketball. I won't be tuned into the men's basketball. I don't even know who plays in men's basketball right now. I don't know. I know a couple of people from Florida, um, a couple of people from UM, FAU, and things in that nature. Um, you won't, UM won't be there. Don't worry. They're 15 UM, and 17. Yeah, They're done. I don't, I don't know what, how they came back this year with injuries and a whole bunch of things didn't go their way. Um, but Caitlin Clark, man, she's a beast. No man. heart. And no people heart think that people who whoever think that she's not going into the WNBA and doing the same thing, y'all dead wrong. You know who that reminds me of? Steph Curry. Steph Curry at Davis and everybody. Oh, he's scrawny. He's not fast. He's not elite. He can't. He won't be able to do it on the next level. But when you can shoot that rock, like how she shoots that rock from 28 feet deep, sometimes 30, sometimes 35 feet deep, that's a threat on any level, anywhere. She could play on at Rutgers Park. She could play at the park. She could play at outside court, inside court, the beach, the sand. The lake, the ocean. Did you did you see the three she hit? They're down yeah. by a point, and and this is an overtime. So they're down by a point. She's inside the three point line, like in the middle of the key, like the middle of the free throw line to the three. Mm -hmm. She takes a step, like she takes this huge step back, like it's not like a step back to the side. She steps mm -hmm. straight back and just and Man. buries it, and they have the lead. This was with fifty four seconds to go in, in she, overtime. Like that shot's like, ridiculous. She's playing like she's really playing like a man. I, like, I mean, she playing like a man. I, I, like her, like watching her is like watching another, like watching the NBA game because she does NBA moves. She shoots from that distance and she's lethal. She's unconscious with it. She don't give a damn. She, like we said, the first half, she played like boo-boo. And then the second half, she 
brought out the mamba mentality and she was just cooking with it like the white mamba are there white mambas out there no there's not <laughs> she was the white mamba. there might be an albino mamba out there uh, 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 there there might be an albino might mamba. Be. that's close enough so she'll be the albino mamba <laughs> But man, uh, that was great to see, man. Like, um, I think like Rudy covered it all, man. She's gonna be great on the next level. I don't care what the heck y'all got to say about that. Um, and then I'm gonna go briefly into uh, Juju Watkins. Um, oh uh, yeah, she played like crap. I don't think USC is gonna make the Final Four, man. They're just too inconsistent for me, man. They struggle with Arizona. Um, I think both Arizonas that they struggle with. Um, they did play, you know, they did play Stanford good, but um, they're just too inconsistent for me. And she has to literally dropped 40 points a night, but they did win without her doing that. So that is surprising. But when it comes to the NCAA tournament, she's going to have to ball. She can't come out there and lay an egg like she did, or they'll be um, going home before the Sweet 16. But like Rudy said, the, um, the dream Final Four, the dream Final Four would be Iowa, USC, USC, and LSU. And we'll be tuned in. And they're on. They're actually on um, prime time this year. They're on they prime time on Sunday, so they'll, wonder, they'll, they're they're prime time Sunday night. Uh, so you're going to see those ratings be huge. I wonder why. Yeah. You can't name. A, I mean, I can name a few players from college basketball that are not in the Hurricanes, but I mean, there's not a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing of there's like the Duke North Carolina game was on Saturday. I watched it also on my phone when I was at UFC 299 and. And I enjoyed Carolina beating up on Duke, but you saw Kelly Filipowski is now the next version of Grayson Allen, tripping people while, you know, he's taking over that white banner, of, what, the white boy banner of tripping people. I would have fucked him, I would have fucked him up. But, um, yeah, I don't know, something about, something <clears throat> in that Duke, something in that Duke water, man, that just make these players, <laughs> they just got to be an asshole. They got to be a white boy asshole for the, for the, like, he, it started. I don't know if it's Leitner started it. It was, I mean, it was Danny. It was Danny, Danny Ferry. Ferry. Okay. Then it was Christian Leitner who's stomping on dudes when they're on the ground. You know. Then you had JJ I mean, didn't do nothing. JJ JJ was, JJ, JJ was just a douchebag. Unlikable. Um, unlikable asshole. Then Grayson Allen was a prick piece of shit, and now it's Filipowski who's taking that torch. I'm gonna be that asshole white dude at Duke. It's a it's a it's a badge of honor, I think, at that school at this point. <laughs> And that's why I All fucking right. hate I fucking hate Duke. I've always I, hated Duke. Yeah, I think everybody does. Nobody grew up in like, oh, I like Duke. I mean, there are some Duke fans, but for the most part, we're not no way. Anybody but Duke. That's that's uh from a scholastic point of view, that's the Southern Harvard. And we're gonna leave it there. Uh for the Southern Harvard graduates out there, Duke University. Shout out to you guys. Grant Hill, what's up? Uh, that being said, we're gonna go right into the next uh topic. I know Rudy was blindsided by thinking we'll talk about NFL free agency, but that's what happens when you're an executive producer. You you just you just switch things up last minute. Keep keep them on his toes. Keep them on his toes. Uh we're gonna talk about NFL free agency. And I would like to start because God answers prayers. God answers prayers. Kirk Cousins, thank you for <laughs> six seasons. I wanna thank you. No, I seriously want to thank you. I actually saw I, I personally don't have social media, but a good friend of mine sent me his uh, video that he sent to the Minnesota Vikings fans. Shout out to your family. Actually, you, you seem to have a lovely family. Thank you for six mediocre years in Minnesota. Um, you turned Justin Jefferson to a superstar that I know he was in LSU. You you got our hopes up high, and and then you showed us who you were. Um, I wasn't shocked. There are, you have a lot of fans out there. So I actually do hope that you can bring the Atlanta Falcons fans something that you didn't bring us, a Super Bowl. Uh, with that being said, I want to shout out to Justin Fields and his agent. <laughs> Man, you look good in purple. <laughs> you look good in purple. That's all I have to say, guys. Jump in. Jump in. My biggest move right now is going to be um, Derrick Henry. I know me and Rudy had an argument about it earlier today. But Derrick Henry is a big move. I'm not. I'm not gonna hate on the move. I love it. It adds another threat to the Baltimore. Um, you can't just key in on Lamar. Um, they had the what the number one overall run game. I mean, basically, damn near every year. But when you add somebody with the threat of Derrick Henry, who could still go deep, could still knock it out the ballpark. It, it it changes the flow of it. Like you have to 
he's still scary. You're not scared of um, Fortson and, and all those other guys that they have at running back. But you see that number, deuce, deuce in the backfield. It, it, it makes you change your mind on defense. You, you, you're going low because you ain't tackling him up high just because he's a big motherfucking guy and he can still break it loose. He adds another threat to the offense. But like I told Rudy, they need a number one threat at receiver. They still don't have that. Bateman ain't it. OJ, OBJ ain't it. Um, but you have Flowers, but Flowers is on the inside. He's running short routes. Who can take the top off on the outside? Who can run all the routes on the route tree on the outside? For Lamar Jackson, and it's not Odell, it's not Bateman. Who you get at? We all know we know Mark Andrews is the big guy across the middle. But what else are they gonna add out there? They need somebody, and we could say, oh, KC won it without a receiver. But nobody thought that shit. Yeah, Rudy ain't think that shit. Donald ain't think that shit. I didn't think that shit. We're getting trolled on Instagram about it because their receivers was terrible. And you need a receiver, a number one receiver on the outside to 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 be semi decent or have somebody that you could throw it out there who can make a play for you. That's just not on the inside. On the inside, you can get doubled a lot more. It's a lot easier to double people on the inside than on the outside. It's just simple because you got to show it a little bit more on the outside. You can know it's coming. On the inside, you can get bracketed in so much different ways with a linebacker, a slot guy, and then the safety guy looking right over the top of him. So that's my one of, that's my biggest move right there. Is Derrick Henry just adds another different a different element to their offense. Um, like, but is Munkin gonna run the ball with him? Because I don't like they were the number one running offense, but they went out there and they decided to give their running backs the ball eight times and Lamar Jackson the ball eight times. Um, but I think when you have Deuce Deuce back there, it's, it's hard to like call a play and be like, oh, I missed it. I just forgot that we have the best running back, one of the best running backs in the league. So. Um, that's one of the biggest moves for me. Um, I'll go to biggest losers after Rudy co talk a little bit. I agree with the, I mean, that move, it surprised me because they ran the ball so well, but it's petrifying to think about Derrick Henry in the backfield with Lamar Jackson. Like that's dangerous with or with, with or without a number one outside wide receiver. By the way, I think they're cutting Odell Beckham. What I read, he's going to be cut. So that project is over. I mean, well, he had a one-year deal. I, he had a no, one-year deal. No, one year no, deal. No, he, he had he had more than a one-year deal. I just he read have, it. He's he being had an option. No, he signed a one-year for fifteen. He signed a, sure. yeah, he signed a well, one-year deal. They were saying he has some type of. They they, they said they cut. It says it was, he was being cut. So he must have a player. Maybe option. Had, maybe, he had, maybe he had an option. I'm not, maybe he had a team option. I'm not sure. I, I don't right know. Now. I don't know. That said, um, I mean, his career is going to end because he's dating Kim Kardashian now. Um, for real? So yeah, they're 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 being rumored now on that. So they're being his it's career, on TM. His, career, his career's gonna end. Yeah, every time someone dates a Kardashian, their career ends. Um, or their career goes in the toilet while they're dating them. Whatever it is. Um, <clears throat> you know it's sad because Odell Beckham was incredible with the Giants, and ever once he left the Giants, it's like his career went in the toilet. You know, ever ever since they had that little photo op in Miami Beach before the playoff game with a bunch of dudes shirtless on the boat. Remember that? Mm-hmm. The week of the playoff game, and then all mm-hmm. of a sudden, like they they get they get blown out of the building in that game. He's never been the same <laughs> since. That said, the, the injury the, didn't the, help. The move that Derrick Henry was the move that I thought was the biggest move. Uh, I agree with Nick. I think Joe Mixon leaving the Bengals, he was traded. I think that's a big situation for the Bengals because they weren't they, they signed weren't, they, they weren't signed good at running Zach. anyway. But he ran for over a thousand yards, and you replaced him with Zach Moss, who ran for seven hundred eighty-five yards. I, I don't really get that decision. Mixon's twenty-seven years old; he's not old. He hasn't hit that thirty-year-old wall yet. Um, so I, I'm not. I'm a little surprised there. Of course, Saquon Barkley to the Eagles. I got a message for the for the Giants fans: Go fuck yourselves. Go fuck yourselves. You're gonna sit here and call this guy disloyal. Why? Because your fucking franchise is failure. Didn't want him anymore. So who exactly was he supposed to sign with? Whoever you allow him to sign with. It's you know just, what? Go fuck yourselves. I don't care if it's a rivalry. That's, rivalries, that's, don't, rivalries do not exist in the NFL anymore to players. Whoever cuts me the biggest check is who I'm going to play for. 
Rudy, it's it, never been like that. It's always it, been about the checks. I don't know why everybody acting differently I, right I, now. But but there in the past, you've heard player. There was there were certain things you thought you'd never see. You know the day, you know the day that that all ended for me as a as a fan. It ended for me the day Jason Taylor went to the New York Jets. Like it was mind blowing because he ended up coming back to the Dolphins. But the, the when he went to the New York Jets, it was like, Come on, no. yeah, there's nothing left, man. <laughs> And he, like, if you're a Dolphin, you go with the Jets immediately thereafter. It's like, oh, my God. And the best Dolphin player we've had in 25 years. Um, but you, but you got to think about it, Rudy. When, it, when, it, when your team doesn't want you. Where I'm you saying want, that. I know. When your team doesn't want you, where are you going to go? I'm going to go to the team that's going to play them twice and that's in the division. And I'm going, and I'm going there to, to, be, to, to break y'all hearts. I want to play y'all twice. I want to come there, and I want to bust y'all in y'all home, and I want to show y'all y'all gave up on me in the most disloyal, disrespectful way possible. That's, that's it. If I'm the opposite player, that's, that, um, if, if my team don't want me, that's what I'm thinking. In my mindset, I'm going to the team that's in the division, and I want to play you, and I want to bust you. I'm going to come there. I want all my family and friends to come there, and I'm going to stick a middle finger up every time I go out there and make a play. And I'm going to sack the quarterback. I'm going to talk shit every time. When I played against my old team, Rudy, I got hyped for that shit. I was ready for it, and I ain't give up shit. I ain't let nothing happen. I talked crap to the sideline, and I was ready for it. We lost. Well, we, we, we had him. We had him. We had the game. We were winning the whole game. We were winning the whole game, and then we threw an interception for a pick six, and we end up blowing it. But other than that, I was talking shit, man. Fuck y'all. I don't care. I want to beat y'all, and I'm playing against my friends. That makes it even more, you know, it's better, you know, for my heart, for, for how I sleep at night. It makes it better that I'm playing against my friends, and I get to beat them, and I get to talk shit to them, and they can't say shit to me. But we lost, so it's, they talk shit to me. <laughs> I was saying that. I said that New York Giants fans, I mean, Tiki Barber went on the radio and said, you're dead to me. And I don't know if he was joking or not. He looked like and, he was joking. You know, he, maybe he was. But the fact that you even say some dumbass shit like that, it's like the Giants didn't want him. The Eagles offered him $12 million a year for three years or $13 million a year for three years. Bye. Bye. Like, what is going on? And I get it. Fans, fans get their feelings hurt. But you know what? Have me, if you were a Saquon Barkley fan, be upset with the Giants. Be upset with the franchise that would not pay him if you love him that much. You know how you fix? You know what you do? You don't buy tickets. But guess what? I'm sure they're sold out. So you really didn't care all that much. You care about who's on your team. I'm a Dolphins fan. I care about who's on my team. I'm very depressed right now that Christian Wilkins is leaving us to go to the Raiders. Do I blame him? Fuck no. I'm pissed off at the Dolphins. I'm pissed as shit about that. That's the, that's the, that's the one that's gotten us the biggest loss. The Miami Dolphins allowed Christian Wilkins, their best defensive lineman, to go to the Raiders. Now, maybe they couldn't afford to pay him. And he's getting $27.5 million a year, five-year deal. Congratulations to him. I don't think he's worth that. Honestly, I don't think he's that level of guy. I don't think he's on that Chris Jones level. I don't Aaron believe Donald's so. Aaron Donald, old Aaron Donald. That's, that's Aaron not, Donald. He got, like, he got like 85 million guarantee, like something like that. Like, I don't think he's worth that. However, I'm wondering if they gave the Dolphins a chance to match it. I'm, I'm going to presume potentially that they did and the Dolphins wouldn't do it. But, and I know why they didn't franchise him because I know there was logistical things with finances and how you, if you... If you don't franchise, if you franchise them, it automatically locks in a certain amount of money. They don't have enough money to pay the guys and whatever. And I get all that. But if we just let go of, I'm a Dolphins fan, everyone, just so you know. Christian Wilkins, Andrew Van Ginkle goes to the Vikings. I think the Vikings got a great player for $10 million a year. He's a good, really good rush, rush linebacker. After we've got two guys out with blown, AC, blown Achilles and blown ACL, or were they both blown Achilles? I'm not sure. Okay. I know. Uh, Achilles. Both of them with blown Achilles. And now I'm sitting here and I have no defensive ends. So I just gave up. I got no pass rushers. And now I just lost my best defensive tackle. And Christian Wilkins is still a top five defensive tackle in the NFL. He's a monster. But I don't, he's not Chris Jones. He's not Aaron Donald. But he's a no. monster of a player. Well, oh, and Aaron we, Donald. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I would still take Aaron Donald ahead of him probably. Yeah, that, yeah that's true. <laughs> but, and then we let go of our starting, uh, Brandon, Brandon, uh, Jones, yes. like we 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 just got gutted on our on our defense, and now they're talking about this is a a rebuild. 
Or a re, a re, a re, I don't know what they called it. A, uh, how do you almost, feel about almost like a salary restructure? I'm pissed. How do you feel about your defense last year anyway? I mean, they were okay. Our defense was actually very good for half the year. It was when they got, when they got, when we got um, oh, that, Jalen yeah. Ramsey back, we were really good for a number of games. And then everyone started getting hurt again. And we let go of Jerome Baker too. I got six defense, I got five, six defensive players that are gone. And we don't have, and we're replacing them with guys that are injured. Like, what are we doing? Now, yeah. Yeah, just so, just just so we can pay two or fifty million a year, you know. I know. I know. Donald has his Kirk Cousins thing. I would trade Tua to the Falcons for Kirk Cousins, head up in a second. I think Tua's awful. Kirk awful up Achilles, though, man. I would take. You know what? We fucking drafted Tua with a broken fucking hip. Well, his hip is not broken, and now. he still can't run. He still can't run. I'd rather have the guy that says, "You like that." You like that? I stop and, pun- and, and, and punches and punches uh, walls and goalposts to break his hand. I think he did that once too. I don't I think he know. Did, or was it that? Or did he headbutt the wall? Something oh. like that. He headbutted the wall, I think, or whatever. Gave himself a concussion. He did that. Some, I, I don't think, think that, that was him. Oh, that was him. Yeah. That was, some, that was yeah. somebody else. Somebody else. I, did think, that. No, I, I know. I know. Donald doesn't like Kirk Cousins, but I think Kirk Cousins is one of the most underrated, underappreciated quarterbacks in football. Um. He's put up some monster numbers. Football's a team sport. So, you know, if if the you know, putting up numbers, if your defense doesn't play well, I'm not sure, but I don't know the Vikings defense the way Donald probably does. But Kirk Cousins has some great years. And they didn't win where it counted. I get that. Shit, really only one guy seems to work is is uh is Mahomes. But uh yeah, I'm I'm very depressed about Christian Wilkins. I'm very depressed about Christian Wilkins because we're about to go give two or fifty million dollars, and I'm gonna fucking break something. See, that's what I told you. I told you the fucking problem with the league is these fucking quarterbacks get paid this money who shouldn't be getting paid that freaking money. Kirk Cousins is a freaking twenty million twenty million dollar quarterback. Daniel Jones, three point eight million dollar quarterback, and they gave him the money instead of instead of Saquon Barkley, and that's where their problem lies. You know what defense planned around? They planned around Saquon. They didn't plan around, oh, we got to stop Daniel freaking Jones. Heck no. That's not what happened. And then he got the money, and Saquon, who put his body on the line, is running the ball 30 times, 25 times a game. He doesn't get the money. That's why y'all team went to shambles, because y'all are invested in the wrong person. And that's why I don't – these these GMs, man. And and, and if y'all going to pay y'all running back, pay them while they're young, man. Between 22 to 28, give them 20 million, 25. That's when they should be getting it. I understand when they get to the back end of their career, you don't want to give them that money because that's they're notoriously that's when they fall off. Me and Rudy had this argument today about 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 um Derrick Henry, Mark Henry, same person, all right, <laughs> same person. All right, I'm just joking. Derrick Henry, they both strong as hell. That's why I, I was making that reference to all my WWE, WWF fans who know about that. Mark Henry was the motherfucking strongest person the in the world. Nation of domination. Beast, beast, <laughs> beast. But, um, but notoriously, when you, I mean, when you turn thirty for running backs, that's when you normally fall off the cliff. So I don't, I don't know what to expect for Derrick Henry. He might be have that ball cold juice that some NBA players are claimed to have right now. Um, but I didn't say anybody's name. Cut it out, man. Y'all know what I'm repping. L.A., baby. Um, but, um, give the running backs their money early, man. When he was giving 2,000 yards, 1,500 yards, that's when they deserve it. And then when they fall off later on, you give them six, seven million and they come in and get 18, 12 carries a game. And then they, you know, ride into the sunset. So when they do fall off, you're not, you know, that hamstrung as a team, but early Saquon should have got that money. And Daniel Jones shouldn't. And these quarterbacks are freaking up the league, man. And I hate it, man. And I freaking hate it, man. These quarterbacks shouldn't be getting paid like they are. And I hate that I have to, have to keep going back to this, but these quarterbacks are ruining the league, man. And, oh, they have so much on their plate. Your team only goes as far as your quarterback. That's a damn lie. I know a lot of teams that have went further than, you know, what their quarterback potential is or what they do. Um, the 49ers, even though we think Brock Purdy is really good, really good. It's McCaffrey, it's Brandon Ayuk, it's, it's Debo, those players. I mean, Purdy is good, but I think he will be really good. But those players are the ones that carry us, you know. And these quarterbacks are messing up the league. I, I just think, man, it's – Yeah, I agree. Man. 
I agree. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Um, all things free agency. I think we got a couple things off our chest. Um, I popped a bottle of champagne when I got the news notification about Kirk Cousins. I hope he does well. Someone tell him that Magic City has amazing wings. Um, call Lou Will. Uh, call Little Baby. There's a lot of people he can hang out with in Atlanta. Hey, Carmen Dupree. Hey, I said, I said, I said, um, Kirk Cousins saw them episodes of BMF and said, oh, hell no, I got to get to ATL. It That's is going down. Me. Is is Justin Jefferson asking back for, asking for the grill back? Didn't Justin I'm Jefferson sure. buy him a grill? Yes, but I'm not sure. Justin, but... I'm not sure if it was Justin. Yeah, does he have to return? Does he have to return it now? You got to no, take, I, you take I, it out his mouth. I mean, he <laughs> he he helped him get his future paycheck, so I think he's fine. But that, yeah. With that being said, we're about to go. Well, has Justin Jefferson gotten a paycheck though? I'm just question. I'm just wondering. No, he, but he he's, will. He's, he will. He will. <laughs> As we uh, segue off, we're going to go into um, the people's champ section. The people have raved. They've commented, they've argued about this section of our show. Rudy's rant. Rudy, get it off your chest. Let's go. Let's get it going. I didn't know what to talk about this weekend. I really didn't this week. I didn't know what to talk about because I wanted to rant about Kim Mulkey, but we had a section about it. So, yeah. This? (laughs) Are you fucking kidding me? The Miami Heat. The 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 nausea, the agita, the anxiety that this franchise gives me every single night they play, it is going to make me die at, at, before I'm 50. I cannot stomach. We were, what were we, nine games above 500 a week ago? Eight, eight or nine games? We're about to be the four seed. I think we were the four seed for a day. Well, the Miami Heat have done Miami Heat things. And the Miami Heat have now lost four straight games to the Mavericks, to the OKC Thunder, to the Washington fucking Wizards, and tonight to the Denver Nuggets. And every single one of those games was very winnable. We led against the Mavericks in the fourth, I believe. I watched the game, but I know we were winning big in the first half. We let Luka go crazy in the third quarter, but we had an even game in the fourth, and we get wiped out. Then we played the Thunder. I did not see that game, actually, but we lost it pretty much in the fourth quarter. And then we play the Wizards at home. A team that's 11, I'm sorry, t- whoa, whoa, sorry they were 10 and 53. And they walked out 11 and 53. Weren't, weren't they like on a 16 game road? They losing? lost 16 straight and then they won one and then they played us. So, we, oh, you know, they, be, they, 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 know how to, they, yeah, they had a two. So now they had, a, they were coming in on a one game winning streak, which is just a win. They left on a streak <laughs> on, with a two game winning streak. Watching the Miami Heat is really fucking painful. And it's because they build up your hopes. They build up your hopes. You start thinking they're going to, they're going to be doing this, that, whatever. And then you get the same fucking garbage. You get Bam out of Bayou playing like a fucking bitch for back-to-back games. Jimmy Butler has been completely invisible for the last two games. I, I just don't know what the hell to think anymore. Tyler Hero, is he going to play again? I mean, does he have a fucking sprained vagina? I, I don't know anymore. This guy is always hurt. This is, that's, I, I, and they're going to bring him back and potentially start him when he should be coming off the bench. We're missing – Jaime Hawkins has been a little bit quiet. I think he had a big game against um, OKC, though, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. I, it, it just all runs together now. The fact of the matter is this team is a massive underachieving team. You were in the fucking finals last year, and we're about to be in a playing situation again? This is ridiculous. You lose to the Wizards. We were down 10 with two, two minutes, minutes to go yeah. in that game. And what happens? We cut it to two. And we have the ball. You're at home. And what do we do? Duncan Robinson misses a three. And then Jimmy Butler misses a three. Now, we Jimmy ran, Butler. We ran a play it. with Rosier and, <clears throat> and Bam did a pick and roll. And it got it, totally blew up. And it, he didn't know what to do with the ball. 
And he, and he passes it to Duncan, who takes a step side, a side steps three with, it, when he was covered pretty well. Why Jimmy don't have the ball? Uh, exactly. Jimmy inbounded the ball to Rozier and never touched it again until he got the rebound. Now, Jimmy's three, I don't think he had much time. I mean, maybe he could have pumped fake and dunk gun in for a 17-footer. He missed it. But why the fuck isn't the ball in Jimmy Butler's hands to tie? Why are we going to tie the game? Even Butler said, I'm always going to go for the win. Well, that's stupid. You're at home. You're playing the Wizards. If you were playing the Nuggets, I can understand. If you were playing the Celtics, I can understand. You're playing the Wizards. And you don't feel like you can beat them in overtime in your home building? Defensively? Tonight, we, we, we give up 100 points to the Nuggets and lose by 14. The game was one-point game at the end of the third quarter. You're on your home floor. Who the fuck is this team? Who are they? I don't know who the fuck this team is anymore. But no, I'm sorry. You're wrong. I'm wrong. I do. They're the same bullshit we watch every fucking year. Fuck with our emotions the entire season. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And then... Maybe we make a playoff run. Because if you remember the year before, we were the one seed where we maintained some level of play because everyone else was up and down. Because we were a one seed with, what, 52 wins? 53 wins? Mm -hmm. The Celtics right now are, I think, 51 and 14, 52 and 14. The Celtics are going to finish with 65 wins. And I just, I'm so tired of watching the same bullshit every fucking year with how they played during a regular season for the most part. We were a five seed in the bubble. Then we were, we were a one. Then we were a, well, the year after, we were a six seed. The bubble year was different, though. Like, yeah, but we were, we, were, we, were, we were a five. We were, we were the two seed all year until it, it got to Tyler, yeah. got, Tyler got hurt and we kind of yeah. fluttered around. Mm -hmm. But we were a five seed. Then we were a six seed. Then we were a one. Then we were a one. What? We were a one seed. Then we're then we're at, uh, an eight seed, like, bro. The inconsistencies are just are maddening, and I don't want to hear about injuries anymore because everyone has injuries. And you know what? The amount of injuries that we have, I gotta start questioning our strength and conditioning program because there's a serious problem. The only the only franchise in professional sports that goes through the same type of bullshit where guys are constantly hurt. Donald, you know who it is. The New York coach. fucking Yankees. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Yankees. The worst strength and conditioning staff on the fucking planet. Now Chicago I got to worry about Garrett Cole and potentially having Tommy John surgery. Yeah, he's being locked. He's, he's being held out now. I don't know if you know that. That was about to be my closing. But, my God, I'm so sick and tired of watching these guys fall like flies every fucking week. Someone gets healthy, somebody else gets hurt. Does this happen to any other team? Because I watch a lot of basketball. And I don't see the Celtics sitting half their fucking roster every week. I don't see Tatum out and then Brown out and then Porzingis out and then Derek White out. No, every week the Heat got another problem. That's every problem. fucking week. That's huh? your problem, Rudy. That's your problem. You keep letting this team yo-yo you. I don't let them yo-yo me. I, I know what they are and I know what they do. So every it was about four times this year we were like, oh, they, oh, they done turn it around. This, yeah. They're, they're, they're the team to beat. And they're, Somebody go down. Or you know what? No. Nobody fact, went down this matter, time. Matter of fact, matter of fact, somebody comes back from injury. And we're like, oh, we got all our players. And then now we they fuck them. it up. And then they fuck up our chemistry. Or whatever. Like, J nobody Jimmy, went down this time. Jimmy goes out and we win a couple games. And he comes back and we're like, oh. But I'm not going to let them yo-yo me to death. No. not. I know what they're going to do. That's why I'm not even paying them any attention to the playoffs. Okay. They're not, not going to get I, me. They're not gonna get I don't me. even I don't even understand at times what Eric Spolcher's rotations are anymore. I think Eric, it's, you know, it's the most confusing shit on earth because one day I, it's this guy. Why did why didn't uh what the hell? Why didn't Thomas Bryant play tonight? I like him. I think he should Why play did him. he play? He's six eleven, two seventy. Why is he on the floor against fucking Jokic? He played, As a, in, did he, he play? Played, he played he played some minutes tonight. I've seen him out there. But I watched the second half, and he didn't play a second, it looked like. Maybe I, I blinked too no, fast. I don't know. He made, a, he made a little floater early, I remember, seeing, like, a little. You know, and you watch, and you know what? I was listening recently to some bullshit. I don't know what. J.J. Reddick's dumbass with his fucking yakking about 
the three point shooting and and how everyone's a great shooter now. Fuck you, JJ. You're full of shit because you ignore every other thing that comes into play with fucking making shots. You were a shooter. That means you see. I define shooter as someone who runs around to get shots, not someone who stands in the corner or stands on the wing and waits for the ball to be kicked out to them. That's what not I, a shooter. That's not I, a shooter. What if I shoot it at forty five percent like that? You're still not a shooter. You're not a shooter. A shooter is freaking moving around without the ball. Most of these guys don't move three fucking feet without the ball. They stand there and they wait. They wait for the driving kick, the driving kick, the driving okay. kick. That's all it is, driving kick. You watch guys with layups, and then all of a sudden, oh, you're open. And you I mean, miss the three. So what and then they that, miss the three. So what is that action called when you when you have the ball in your hand and you release it and then the, and it goes in the hoop? Shooter. Bam made a three tonight. Is he a shooter? Come on, he made one three. Don't do that. Don't. He made a three tonight. Is he a shooter? We're talking about, Is he a shooter? We're talking about other people. Is that had, he a shooter? We're talking about other people that made 153 right, threes for the season. Oh, there's not a guy that I mentioned that's made 153s. There's not none of those guys that made 153s. Let's stop the noise. That's like saying Jimmy Butler's made. Is Jimmy Butler a shooter? No. If he stands by himself and no one's guarding him at the three point line, will he take the shot? Yes. And should he make it? Yes. He's an NBA professional. You're wide open. That's a practice shot. 45% says uh, differently. Yeah, but well, you know what? He missed the one that would have won us the game on Sunday. He, he, so, is, a, he is a shooter he, this year. Yeah, he's a shooter this year. Again, this this entire – the Miami – so he mentioned the Miami Heat specifically tonight because he was on the broadcast. And he mentioned the Heat. And he says, they don't shoot enough threes. Motherfucker, are you watching? You know how to lose games? It's when we keep shooting threes, you stupid fuck. We actually shoot – a decent amount of threes per game, actually. We, no, well, according to him, and he's a statistician, he says I mean, we don't shoot enough threes. Compared to the amount of field goals that we take per game, we shoot. Because the fact of the matter is, he says we don't shoot enough of them, which tells me what I think of him in basketball because he thinks everyone's a shooter and he ignores everything else. That's why scoring is up and the whole nine, but whatever. But every time we shoot a whole bunch of threes, we look at Dallas, we're up 15 points in that game. Why they get back in the game so fast? Why do leads shrivel up so quickly? Because the team with the lead, I don't know, did you see that recently, today or yesterday? Five games where there was a 20-point lead blown. I think it was, I think they were, it was it was like 10, 15 years ago, something like that. We've had 29 20-point leads blown this year. Because the three-point shot is... It's not because of the three. Yes, it's because of the three-point shot, but both ways. Because how do you get back in the game? One team keeps shooting threes, keeps missing threes. The one with the lead is still taking bad shots. The other one now gets hot. And it's bop, 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 and now we have a close game again. Whereas if you're the team leading, you're slowing the shit down, you're attacking the rim, you're getting fouled, you go to the free throw line, and you make your free throws, and you keep the fucking lead. You slow the game down. It's you don't need to be playing a track meet. It's not and, that's why they, and that's why the Heat, the Heat, cannot beat the, the Heat cannot beat the Dallas Mavericks in a track meet. The Heat cannot beat the fucking OKC Thunder in a track meet. It's not that simple, though. It's like it is it's, that simple. No, because how many I, layups have you seen Jimmy Butler pass up? Wide I, open layups for a fucking bad three. You know I mean, you see it all the time. We both watch it. I see it. I see it. I see it. Yeah. I mean, I also see Jimmy go up and and force you know some shots into people and draw contact and get to the free throw line eight nine times a game. He's not doing that this year. For us to win, he has to take ten free throws a game. Playoff time. From your mouth to God's ears, I'm done. Rudy, 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 that was epic. I, I, I love to hear it. It's not common to get a super fan to go off on his own team. That's not common. But that being said, we're going to go right into my favorite part of the show because it's the one part I get to be selfish, and it's Don's, Don's Dimes. They call me a point god. Um, Nick knows this. I've, I've, I've been throwing alleys since 2006. Uh Clothes, women, it, fashion. A we're, lot. So we'll stop. That's, we're gonna stop. We're gonna oh stop yeah. There. But okay. We're gonna okay. Stop there. But um, that being said, free aid, NFL free agency. We're gonna just dive in. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we were talking about uh, uh Mike Tannenbaum and how we think it's hilarious that he is on television talking about football. So you know, we're gonna get this quick, man. I want I want your thoughts. For, for, first fire thoughts. I don't even want you guys to think. Just first fire thoughts. Two-part question. If you could be the GM for any team, what would it be? 
and what would be the one move you'll make. It'll be shocking because you guys are going to be like, oh, Minnesota Vikings, and you'll be right. <laughs> you'll be right. I would stop fucking playing. I would stop playing and go get Justin Fields. I don't feel strongly enough about anybody in the draft that will still be there by the time we have a chance to pick. I like what Justin Fields did in Ohio State. I even knew about him since he was in Georgia. This guy has been in dysfunction in Chicago. I, he can throw that spiral. He has good size. He has potential. You line him up with Addison. You line him up with JJ. I think we're we're a ten win team. Now I'm not about to say we're gonna win the Super Bowl. I'm not a dis. This I'm not a delusional Cowboys fan. I'm not. This year is our year. That's not. That's not me. I just want to be competitive for the next couple of years. And we have a nice young core. We lost Hunter, even though I knew he was going to leave. We don't have that much type of money to pay him. But I think we have some great supporting pieces. We have some money to go get some people. Let's stop playing. Give them a second round, a third rounder, and get Justin Fields in the door. Because I do not want J.J. McCarthy. Um, I don't want any of, of these guys that are just laying around that's going to be there by pick 10. So that'll be my choice. I would be the GM for the Minnesota Vikings, and I'll go get Justin Fields. So what would you guys do? Go ahead, Rudy. I, 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 need, I need an extra second. I would. <laughs> well, I mean, being that my general manager basically just gutted my defense um, to overpay a broke hip quarterback that can't throw a deep ball, yet he has the most elect- electrifying wide receiver in football, I would do something that, I mean, obviously, if we're taking this from a perspective of salary caps are relevant or whatever, I don't know, because Miami has no money to spend. That's part of the problem. A problem he created. This is, this is wishful thinking, Rudy. <clears throat> wishful, wishful thinking. thinking. I'm, wishful taking, thinking. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have Tua sleep with the fishes. I'm going to tie a rock to, rock to his fucking leg and drop him in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, not really. Not really, <laughs> obviously. But I would be dumping Tua in a second. I would take. I would trade him to anyone who would take him. Anybody. I would take any number of quarterbacks over him. And you know what? He fooled me last year. He got me excited. He made me believe. And then he stuck a fucking knife in my throat. My throat, my chest, my gut, my back. He fucking... Went back to that guy from under Brian Flores who couldn't throw a 10-yard pass. I'm sick of watching Tua be this guy. Because if Tyreek Hill never came to Miami, there'd be no question that he was not the guy. Tyreek Hill made this guy look good. It's a fact. He changed the Dolphins' offense. And I'm sure Tyreek Hill wishes today that he was still in Kansas City. Because there's no way in the world that this guy is looking at this shit right now and saying, I cannot believe I'm fucking here. And the team that I left has now won back-to-back Super Bowls without me. So who would I trade him for? I would go back to the player that we should have drafted when we drafted him. And that's Justin Herbert. I would trade him straight up. If they would take him, I would make that deal. I can't imagine they would make that deal because Jim Harbaugh is now the coach for the Chargers. But that's the deal I would make in a heartbeat. Without a thought in my mind, I would trade Tua and get Justin Herbert. Okay. Because I think Mike McDaniel is a very good offense. I think he's a very good coach, really. I do. I think he's creative. Now, I think he needs to hand off the play calling duties to someone else and be a head coach. However, his hands are still on it. And with a guy like Herbert, I, I think he can help make Herbert incredible. And Herbert's really good. People will say what they want. I think Herbert's really good. And I think he'd put I think he'd bring him to the next level. So that's the deal that I would make. It would be Tua for Justin Herbert. Tua and his um, you know, judo lessons. He learned how to fall. He didn't get hurt. So he's tradable now. Because last year he was un- he was untradable. Who the hell would trade for Tua last year? I was concussed all the time. So he learned how to fall. Now I can go trade him to somebody. Okay. Okay. All right. This is what I'll do. I am the New York Jets. I'm going to go get Justin Fields right now. I need a backup quarterback. I let him sit there for a year under Aaron Rodgers. He's going to, I mean, 
deal with Aaron Rodgers shit. Aaron Rodgers, one more year to Brett Favre. We're going to treat him like Brett Favre, get his ass up out of here. Yada, yada, yada. See how this year goes, how much it progressed. If we go on rolling, we're going to let Brett, I mean, Brett Favre, we're going to let the same person. We're going to let Aaron Rodgers carry us as far as he could go. But you know what? We're grooming this guy to be the next quarterback because we're going to have Brees Hall with him. We have a nice young budding receiver that's going to grow with him, and we're going to let that be our core. And that's what the move I'm making. It's plain and simple. We're going to go get Justin Fields. We're going to let him sit for one year. You're going to get your money. You know, we're just going to groom you. are going to let you t- sit behind a quarterback who knows what he's doing, um, who's been around for a long time. And I don't know how receptive Aaron Rodgers will be to this. I mean, I don't give a fuck because I'm thinking about my team for the future and we need, to, we need to get rolling. We can't just be mediocrity, a team that's been in the drain, trash, boo-boo for the past how long? 20, 30, 40 years, we had a little Rex Ryan phase, but besides that, we have not been very good. But we need to start thinking about the future. We need to have a, a plan after the plan. The plan was to get Aaron Rodgers, but we need another plan. And another plan has to be a, somebody that's going to be in line right after, and that person is going to come for cheap. We're going to throw a third-round draft pick right now, and we're going to be able to get him. It can't be much more than that. We're going to um, He's going to be on the contract for another year. We're going to give him his little money next year, but – he really hasn't, you know, earned it to get paid a lot so we can still build our team around him, get nice talent around him, another receiver, a nice tight end, and let him grow into being a great quarterback in the future, take his time because he's going to have talent around him. By the time he understands the game, you know, to read defenses and do things that well, now we can pay him money. He can carry our franchise to, to I mean, playoffs, Super Bowl, and, and beyond. That would like be the that. move I make. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Don's Dimes. Guys gave me some colorful things to think about. Rudy going Justin Herbert. I think ninety percent of the offense fans will say that. Nick, you threw me for a doozy there. Justin Fields and 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 Jay almost, almost had one more. Almost. You'd be changed. surprised. You'd be surprised. On there's a lot of Dolphins fans that absolutely love Tua. Like they are abnormal. It's they love Tua. I mean, I don't know why. Because Rudy, he's better than than what y'all had for the past. We we were we were we were. We were, we were, we were, we were 25 years. We were 10 and 7. We were 10 and 7. We lost our last three regular season games. He was the quarterback. Tough games. We had to win one game. Those were tough. We had to win one game. That was tough. With that being said, guys, we're going to uh, segue right into Nick's we could have got. We could have gotten a white privilege quarterback. That would have been good. Oh, Lord have mercy. We're going to get, get on this. right into Nick's picks. Nick, get right. right into your picks. All right, give me a give me a little second now. We got sidetracked. I done totally got a little off about who I was going to pick. It was all for basketball, and I had a a nice parlay um for um actually Friday because you know that's when it'll be aired. That's when y'all will see these things, and we're gonna go for a nice um a doozy of them. It's gonna be a six teamer. Yeah, we're picking all six games. I don't care. We're going. We're going for the gusto. Go hard or go hard. Are, they, are these with point spreads or straight up to win? You know they don't give the point spreads so early because they don't know about injuries and things of that nature going into Friday. You know we are, we're a couple of days away. So you're saying a six team parlay? I'm gonna write this down myself now. Actually. Yeah, I'm gonna see if this works. Yeah, go go put it down because it's definitely gonna at least ten times value your money because it's gonna because the positive on this gonna be gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Gonna be good. Gonna be a doozy. Easy one. I mean, we're gonna take the points, Suns over Hornets. Whatever they give the points for the Suns, take it, take it. Whatever it is, take the points. Whatever, take the points. Give the Hornets fifteen that night. They're gonna get blown out. I don't give a damn. We're gonna take the Heat points. No, no, we're gonna take the Pistons for the points over the Heat because they just are not playing well. The Heat will win the game, but they'll probably be like negative nine. We're gonna take the Pistons. It's gonna be close. They're playing pretty well. They're not as bad as their record, you know, make them seem. We're going to take the Magics over the Rock, over the Raptors money line. Magics over the Raptors money line. We're going to take that. We're going to take the Pelicans over the Clippers money line at home. Um, Harden's going to go to New Orleans. He's going to have gumbo, seafood, all of good things. He's not going to be his normal 215, 20 pounds self that day. He'll be 235. Moving a little slower. Seafoods is delicious. Uh, then we got that night. Also, we have uh, we're gonna take the 
the Spurs with the points against the Nuggets. Wemby is going to the Spurs, yeah. The points. I'm not going to say they're not going to win. They'll it'll be like minus 15. Where is where is the game? In San Antonio. And you think that the the Nuggets will be a 15 point favorite on the road even against the Spurs? Yes, it'll be at least 13. Take it. Take the Spurs. Wemby, your mama. Love it. Write it down now, because when we come back, and y'all be like, oh, Nick is stunting. You know, he, he has a, a Rolex watch. Yeah, that's because tonight I hit. Um, and then we're going to take the Jazz over the Hawks money line. In Utah, Hawks are not playing really well, but it's that, that altitude factor. They won't win. Right so what's, a, what's, a, what's a $5 parlay give me? I'll probably give you about a. That being said, we're off that. We're gonna we're gonna just stay right off, and we're on basketball, so we're gonna stay here. Uh, NBA. I, I, need, I need eight dollars out there, Rudy. I'm sorry, that's my fee. That's oh, my fee. Cool. Eight eight dollar <laughs> fee. That that's a generous finder's fee, Nick. That's a generous finder's fee. That being said, we're gonna segue right into NBA. We're we're still on the same. We're in the association. Shout out to everyone that keeps the association glaring. Nick Nick had a funny joke the other day, and he was like, "Hey." Uh, Roger Goodell was like, hell no. Adam can't have all the storylines because the free NFL free agency has been amazing. Has been amazing. We know what NBA free agency, free agency is typically like. NFL free agency got the storylines this year. Uh, with that being said, uh, we're going to talk about the East. Is there any team that could challenge the Boston Celtics? Um, I'm going to firmly say <laughs> no um, because I'm a Chicago Wolves fan, so I don't see anybody else. Um, One second. Oh, my little man is up. Hey, hey, what's up? Y'all say what's up. Hey. He hey. looks upset. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to parlay him to uh, somebody else's mama. One second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. With that being said, Rudy, is there any team yeah, that um... you think could challenge if it, the Boston Celtics, is there any well, team the question be? the question really is which team could, not is there, because otherwise we're boring. It's which team, and I'm gonna go completely against what I just ranted about, <laughs> because there's only one team in the in the Eastern Conference that can challenge the Boston Celtics, and it's the Miami according, Heat. According to you, according to you, that is that that is the only team that can do it. I don't think anyone really can, but if you're giving me the option of one team, the only team that can make it interesting with the Boston Celtics is the Miami Heat. And it's predicated on two things. They changed how they, 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 they become a different team in the playoffs. And they've done that now three of the last four years. So we, it's not like we haven't seen it. Secondly, Jimmy Butler will elevate his game. Now, will he elevate his game to a level where he's the best player in the world? Because against the Milwaukee Bucks last year, as as we talked about last week, Jimmy Butler was the best player in the, in the world for one series. He, that was the greatest playoff performance I've ever seen from anyone. That includes Michael Jordan. Um, I've never seen someone do – Michael Jordan won six titles. Michael Jordan never had back-to-back games where he was down 16 points in the fourth quarter and personally p- picked his team up on his back and, and willed him to a win. Never because he that. never had to. You know what? He never had to. That's great. It means he never did it. Never had to. He still never did it. And the fact of the matter is Jimmy Butler did that in back-to-back games. He they went for fifth. No, they won. What are you talking about? They lost. The- they didn't win the championship. They still okay, lost. Okay, I said the one series. They I lost. said one series, Donald. I didn't say a playoffs. I said one they series. Lost. What does that have to do with the- what the question was? You haven't won since LeBron. Okay, well, again, what was the question? I'm telling you about the one series was the greatest one series performance that I've seen in my entire life, including Michael Jordan. And I was actually alive to see most of Jordan's career. I was alive to see all of his career. You were alive for part of his career. So I saw his entire career. I saw the 63 point game on the Celtics and they got swept. So what does that mean? I'm still sitting here telling you that the Jimmy Butler in that series was better than anything LeBron did in Miami. Because you know who Jimmy Butler don't have on his team playing next to him? Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh. He has a poor man's Chris Bosh. 
In fact, he has less than a poor man's Chris Bosh because Bam Adebayo can't hold Chris Bosh's job strap. And there's not a player on the Miami Heat right now that can hold Dwayne Wade's freaking jock strap. So what he did against Milwaukee was otherworldly. Can he do that again? I don't know. But the Miami Heat are the only team that constructed can really defend, de- defend Boston. Because that's what it comes down to. It's come, going to come down to defense. The games are going to be played in the hundreds, the low hundreds, high 90s. And if you want to give, you want me to give you a second team, the only other team that could potentially give the Boston Celtics a headache, it's not the Bucs, it's not the Sixers who are injured, it's not the Knicks, it's the Indiana Pacers. The Pacers are the only team that could give the Celtics a headache because the Pacers can score and score and score. They won't stop a, a, a runny nose, but they lead the league in scoring, and the number two team in scoring is the Boston Celtics. So the only team that I think that has a shot in hell, realistically, is the, are the, is, the, is the Heat, but I don't believe the Heat will do it. I think the Boston Suns are going to go to the finals. I said it. If, they shock, if the Heat shocked me again, fabulous. I'll be very, very happy. But the Boston Celtics right now are a machine, and the machine will get beaten by the freaking other machine, the Denver Nuggets. Can't hear you, Nick. Can't hear you. Hear me now. Hear me now. All right. All right. Rudy just said a whole bunch of nothing. The only team that can give the Celtics a run for their money will be the Milwaukee Bucks. They can score the ball. And you know why I'm not going to go with the Miami Heat? They were my team, but because I thought Bam was, gonna, was playing well this year, but he's not going to be the 1B to Jimmy Butler's 1A. I'd rather go with Dame, who could be the 1B to Giannis 1A. That's who I'm going to trust more. Dame in the playoffs, big shots, big – you know, big moments, you know, when they need him to close the game, he'll do that. Giannis will handle the first three quarters. It'll kind of be like Kobe and Shaq. Shaq dominated the first three quarters, and guess what? Kobe came and finished the game. Free throw line, get to the spot he needed to get to, hit the shots he will hit. And that's the same thing Dame is going to do with Giannis. Giannis going to control the game, then they got the other players around him who will be big for him. You still got Brooke Lopez, who's a big force in between, in the middle, who will be able to guard, who will be able to guard, Kristoff and, and 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 when they bring Horford in the game, more Horford than Kristoff. I mean, and 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 that's the only team that could give them some problems because of Giannis. And this has just been like a whole little circle of teams been going around. It's been the Miami Heat go to the championship, the Celtics go to the championship, Milwaukee go. Milwaukee's been out the last couple of years. So guess who turn it is now? Milwaukee. It will be Milwaukee's turn to come and compete. Everybody else did their thing. Boston went. Miami went. Milwaukee went the year before that, and Miami went the year before. Now, guess who turned it is back to being Milwaukee. And Milwaukee posed the most threat. They score about the same amount of points as the, as the Celtics do per game. Their defense isn't as great, but it has been better of lately besides the drumming that they took last night. But other than that, you know, the, the additions of Patrick Beverly, you know, the, uh, the 1990s, who will be the 1990s Gary Payton if he played back then? Just because 1990s were done with it, we're through with it. They're trash. Um, um, we're going with Milwaukee. Why? Do you, why, why do you really think that? Did why you think don't... that on February 15th? Yeah. You did. Yeah. So you you thought that on February 15th when they lost to the Memphis Grizzlies? Yeah. I, I, well, hold on. Hold on. No, no, I'm, hold I'm, on. I'm, I'm, because because I understand they got a little hot. So Rudy went well, against well, Fluff. Well, they got well, hot. They well, Philly, Charlotte. Well, Charlotte, when we, Chicago. When we came back on here after the All-Star break, I said Milwaukee's going to go in the ring. He said, oh, no, we're going to catch them. We're, we're, we're but right they're behind. playing. Well, yeah, if we beat the Washington Wizards, we could have caught them. They lost the last three. They got drummed the last three of the last four games. So they got beat by 35 last night. They got beat by the Lakers without LeBron James, a game that led by six with a minute to go. They lost by 35 to, uh, to Golden State without Steph. So we're picking. So we're so it's tomatoes and tomatoes, tomato tomato right now. Tomatoes both, and potatoes, what? Mm. So because they're both because you 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 over here going off about a team that's that's that has just. I don't lost think the anyone's. Win. I don't think anyone's gonna beat the Celtics. But you believe that that the Celtics will actually lose to the to the Bucks. That's the thing. Yeah, I'm going with the Milwaukee going to the finals. Stand exactly. Up. So I don't think that he's going to the finals. That you're yeah. actually gonna make that pick. So let's bet a hundred bucks on that one. Are the Bucks no. going to the finals? You yeah. got a Bucks? I got anybody else? I got the Bucks. I got anybody else. Giannis. I'm rolling with Giannis. 
Okay, 100 bucks. I got anybody else. The second best player in the league. And Dame Lillard, by the way. Dame Lillard, who you said is a big moment guy. When did he last get to the finals? When did, he, when did he play with Giannis? When, when did he last get to the finals? When when, I'm he, sorry, when did he last get to the Western Conference finals and win a game? Wow, I thought you just you, you had to put that last part into it. I was about to say a couple years ago. but Yeah, win a game. Did he win a game that series? He played against the... the, the did he win a game? He played against did he win a, top, a, game? a top five player of all time. And did he win a game? No. No, okay. If he didn't win a game, I'm just saying. But he's he never won a game in the Western Conference Finals. And Dame Lillard this year has been terrible. Oh, he's been okay. He's been terrible. He he's been moment. terrible. He he's literally moment. sitting here whining every fucking night about how miserable he is in Milwaukee. He's bored. He goes home after games. He's going through a divorce. He's so sad. Man, you fucking pussy. You're making $50 million a year to play basketball. Now, if you want to cry your way out of Milwaukee and come to Miami, I'd be very, very happy. Oh, the person that you just you just shitted on him. Now you want him in Miami. I'm so confused. Hey, I've always wanted him in Miami because he's going to make my tickets worth something. Because, you know, it's not easy to sell these things when we sell. Rudy, Rudy, I, you're a walking contradiction. I am my baffled. Gosh. You just shitted on him, man. He wouldn't be trash here. He wouldn't be this trash man. here. You know why he's been bad in Milwaukee? Because he don't want to be there. That's one. You know the other reason? Wow. Because he and Giannis don't mix. He doesn't. This is like LeBron and Dwayne Wade. When LeBron first got here, he didn't know if he was the man or not the man. But they still a, to the finals, right? Yeah, and they lost because LeBron didn't know if he was the man or not the man, and he freaking quit on us. All right. So Dame I, Lillard, and Dame Lillard's not anywhere near the player LeBron James. So let's not even delude uh, ourselves. I mean, all he has to do is average eight points in the finals to be, you know. <laughs> to be as good as LeBron, I guess. Yeah, you're right. If he averages eight points, he's done as much as LeBron has. But Dame Lillard has had a really poor season for his own for his standard. That's and a big part of it has been they can't figure out if he's the guy or not the guy. Look, he took the final shot versus the Lakers and had that shit blocked by Spencer Dinwiddie. You know, um, I mean, I don't know what the hell that play was that they called. Give me the Bucks. But, huh? Give the Bucks the buck. and the Lakers. The Bucks versus the Lakers in the finals. All right. You get your $100 waiting for me because they're not going to the finals. So now, well, the Lakers are in the finals now, too. The Bucks and the Lakers. So you're going to put 100 on the Lakers, too? I'm going to be just taking all your money. It's going to feel good because I'm usually losing money to you. So I'm happy to take it back. Book it. Book it. Okay, you heard that, Donald. He got the Lakers and the Bucks. I got 100 on both these freaking sides. I can take anybody else, and he got them. So that's $200 in your pocket. I need, I, need, it, I, need, I, need, I need a five to one on that. So you give me five. Oh, look at this fucking guy. They go to Vegas. I'm not Vegas. <laughs> Listen, guys, that being said, we, we're, we're getting off the NBA and, and who we think could take it out the east from Celtics. We're going to go right into our last section of the show. It is combat corner, combat corner. And we're going to jump right into the first fight. Uh, AJ, Anthony Joshua against Francis Ngannou. Um, I hope Francis is doing well. Um, that was a vicious blow he took. Vicious, vicious blow. Um, I've said it. I think I said it on the last show. I said it to people around me, people who I'm someone who boxed for a very long time back in the ring. And um, I can go toe-to-toe with Max Kellerman with all things boxing. I knew AJ would destroy him. I didn't think it would be in the second round. I, th- I think he would. I thought it would go the distance. I thought he would win by points. But AJ just looked sharper. He just looked sharper last Friday. He just looked like, I'm, I, I think people have been disrespecting me. People aren't really talking about me the way that they're talking about Tyson Fury. And I he he really wanted to make a huge example out of it. But I will say this though. Did Francis really lose? And Francis his whole UFC career he made four million dollars. In two boxing matches he made thirty. Not really sure if he lost. And he's shown that he can still be someone that puts people in the seats and sells pay per view. So he's going to have maybe another three or four boxing matches. I don't know who is who it against, but he's going to have a couple of more boxing matches only because people will buy. People will that's buy. A, doesn't a, matter. It doesn't matter. No, what they think. won't. They, they will. Do you want, I will bet $1,000 he has another boxing match. I didn't say they will buy it, though. You said that you bet that they will buy. Francis couldn't sell UFC fights. Boxing is not UFC. He wants All to be a boxer because because Tyson Fury sells and Anthony Joshua sells. Oh, who else will he fight? Wilder? Thing. 
Yes, <clears> Bodhi's fine. Wallace yeah. coming off a lot. Remember, people don't realize this. Like heavyweight fighters, they rank the top hundred and twenty-five. Like he can, and he has a deal with Saudi Arabia. He could fight anybody. Like, are you gonna pay? Are you gonna pay him twenty million dollars to fight number one twenty-five? Though, I'm not gonna pay anybody anything. <laughs> but they don't know what the Saudi Arabian. I don't even think the Saudi Arabians will pay him twenty million dollars to fight number one twenty-five. You don't know that he can fight anybody in the top ten. Like. He can. He has a ton he of people. He, he wouldn't be anybody. He wouldn't be anybody in the top ten, and he proved it that Black on Friday. If he wins or loses, I'm it's entertainment. The... It's entertainment, and he is entertaining. To whom the, the Saudi Arabians who are trying to, it as you said last week, disguise the fact that they treat their treat, that, that they they commit the some of the biggest they atrocities in the world. Support high. Value entertainment. Francis Ngannou is an international star. It's a second fact. round. Second round. That's not entertaining. That's not entertaining, Von. I watched. Did you watch the fight? No. No, y'all. Yes. You, you, because yes. did you see it when it happened? Yes. Or like, it was. Yes. It was embarrassing, yes. and they spent the entire okay. broadcast pumping him up like he was going to win. I can name superstar fighters that have been put to sleep. And they went back to entertaining. Manny Pacquiao was put to sleep where people thought he died versus Marquez in the fourth fight. People thought he died. And he's fought maybe 12 more times after that. It doesn't matter that you've lost. It honestly doesn't even matter how you lost. He has created a niche for himself where he's going to be doing his fights, not in Vegas, in the Middle East. Their economics are different. Their entertainment, their craving for entertainment is different. Mark my words, he's going to have quite a few more boxing matches. It may not be against the Anthony Joshua's of the world or the Tyson Furies of the world, but he's going to have other fights. That's it. This is from the boxing aficionado. You can take it or not, but he's going to have more boxing matches. He is. That's a fact. I watched that fight when it happened in my car driving to Lakeland, so FHP don't send me a ticket. Um, but I watched that fight when it happened, and they the whole broadcast was talking about how Joshua was nervous because he didn't want to talk to the media, and Ngannou looked so calm. That calmness lasted the first big right hand that landed on his jaw, where he where he was literally out in the first round. And I think what we saw was a matter of Anthony Joshua training, whereas Tyson Fury trained with a burger in one hand and a beer in the other. Tyson Fury did not train for that fight versus Engano. He was overweight and out of shape. And it was obvious. Because I believe that if Tyson Fury had trained, he'd have done the same exact thing inside of five rounds. I picked AJ inside of five rounds to put him out. And he put him out in two. And the way he put him out, the referee should have stopped the fight after the first knockdown of the second round. Because when that first knockdown came, he was out. He was His mouth was busted open. He looked lost. And the immediate next punch had him folded over like Stipe Miocic when he fought him in the UFC. And it was he was out on the ground for four minutes, at least. He was unconscious. And I don't know what people think about that, but when you're unconscious, that's scary. That's a scary situation. And what I saw was a real boxer destroy a non-boxer. And it's what I expected Fury to do. And it's what I expect any boxer in the top 10 going forward to do because they're going to train. Because the fact is he's strong as hell. And we all know that with one shot, he can drop somebody. There's no question about it. But that's his only shot. That's his only shot is a one big pay haymaker shot. The only fight, the only fight that I would have any interest in seeing with him in, again, is Deontay Wilder. Nobody else. Joseph Parker will run circles around him. It'll be boring. The big man from China could be interesting because they're both slow and big and strong. And I mean, that man packs a humongous punch also because he fought Parker the, in the earlier fight, dropped Parker twice, but lost the decision because the other eight rounds, he didn't do anything because he couldn't move. But that fight, I think, I don't, I mean, the fact of the matter is Ngano still has to fight in the PFL. And when you get knocked out like that, I think he should take six months off at least. 
at least because that was a devastating knockout. You, you, you comparing these them to Pacquiao, like Pacquiao had 60 some odd fights. Like you're comparing a guy with two boxing matches. He's 37 years old to a man who's been a fight a boxer his entire career, a multiple time champion, multi division champion. I understand the comparison, but uh, you're comparing a novice to a pro. Yeah, you know boxing better than I do, no question about it. And yes, if the Saudi Arabians want to throw money at it, they can throw money at it. I'm not saying that Mangano hasn't won by making a boatload of money. I'm very happy for him, but I think he'd be better off going back to the PFL. Mm -hmm fighting that one big man, win the title, retire from that, and then go back to box if he wants to get, get some confidence back because I don't see how he walks into any ring confident now. He had a fake bravado about him. He got really fucking arrogant the week of the fight. He was talking hella shit to Fury. You're about to fight Anthony Joshua, and you're talking shit to Fury on Thursday in a press conference? Talking about if we saw each other in the street, what, like, are you fucking kidding me? First of all, street fight is not an octagon fight. A street fight, I can take a bat and hit you in the head with it. A street fight, I can do a lot of things that I can't do in an octagon. So I wouldn't put it past Tyson Fury, who's six foot nine and 280 pounds, to do some dirty shit in a street fight. So that whole attitude, but that whole attitude he had the entire week, he got arrogant. He, I, he got arrogant, man. And you know that if you, you saw any other fighter sitting here talking to another fighter while you're fighting that guy right there who's a multiple-time champion as well, it, are you overlooking Anthony Joshua? I don't know. I hope that he goes back to MMA. I, I'm tired of, of MMA fighters thinking that they're boxers. It bothers me because I don't think a boxer would dare ever go over to MMA if it wasn't for the fact that these MMA fighters are constantly calling boxers out. Boxers don't call out MMA fighters. MMA fighters are calling boxers out because they're the ones that benefit from the fight. They're the ones that want to get paid because they're not making shit or what they think they should make in the UFC. That's just my thoughts. Nick, you got anything? Are you there? Yes, not. Let's just go right into... Uh... <clears throat> no, I, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Let's go right into um, UFC 299. You were in attendance. Oh, uh, that was a blast. I, I was at UFC 299. It was, an, it, was an, it was an incredible environment, packed house, loud as hell, some great fights. I mean, the, the championship fight was rather anticlimactic. It was kind of what I expected um, with Sugar Sean O'Malley winning by decision. He landed a knee on Cheeto Vera's face. That makes me wonder that Cheeto Vera has, like, iron in his face because I don't think anyone else would have withstood that knee. He need him. I mean, when you heard – I was there. You didn't hear the noise there. But when I watched it back on replay, the cracking sound that he made on this guy's face, it's remarkable he didn't go down. And he didn't even go down. It's, it's unbelievable how tough Cheeto Vera is. But O'Malley looked fantastic. However, O'Malley calling out to Tupor, Ilya Toporia after the fight was pathetic. You want to call out the 45 champion? First of all, Toporia will knock you on your ass. That's the first thing. He, he, he throws with massive power. But secondly, you want, you're doing this because you don't want to fight Marab. Marab Devalashvili. You don't want to fight him. Because he'll take you down for five rounds. And this won't be an Aljo situation. Marab never stops. So maybe the, the I don't know what the UFC does if they're trying to milk the Sugar Sean train, but that's gonna if he fights Marab next, he's losing. He's gonna lose. And it, it's gonna be ugly. It'll be a dominating loss, in fact. Um that said, the 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 three fights I want to talk about specifically are Dustin Poirier and Benoit Saint Denis. That fight was unbelievable. Poirier walked in as a, a plus 185. He was an underdog to the 12th ranked guy in the, in the world. A guy who hadn't beaten a soul in the top five, top eight, top 10. He's in the number 12 because he hasn't beaten anybody yet. But he's been putting people out. And the week of the fight, there was a photo of Benoit Saint Denis with a mark on his head that looked like a staph infection. In fact, most people presumed it was. Now, for those that don't know, staph infections require antibiotics and, and it, can, it can drain you, can sap you, the whole nine. But you know what? You still have a duty. If you don't want to fight because that staph infection, guess what? Don't fight. But he did fight. So guess what? If, you can, if you're in the, in the cage, I don't want to hear about excuses after the fact. I don't want to hear about your training camp. I don't want to hear about anything. I know that first round, Benoit saint Denis came out like fire. He was attacking Poirier, throwing bombs looking for takedowns, got, got his back. 
Couldn't finish him. Poirier gets up, takedown. Poirier's getting up. Poirier's taking some shots. And in the second round, it looked like Benoit St. Denis burned his tank in the first round, which to me shows a massive level of inexperience. Because if you know that you have this issue, or if you, I mean, he claimed it. The problem is he claimed it after the fight. He said, yeah, I was on antibiotics, and I'm so sorry. I only had a one round of energy in me. Bro, you fucking were going balls to the wall in that round. So you shouldn't have gone balls to the wall so quickly. Because as soon as you went balls to the wall, second round, Poirier cracks him. Middle of the second round, I mean, he cracked him. He went, Poirier was going for guillotines left and right. Like, boy, will you please stop going for these damn guillotines? And he kept jumping guillotines. And, um, but eventually he caught him with one. He caught him with a big, a, a big shot and then dropped him real quick. He went in for a takedown again, got him off. Knocked him out. He knocked him, starched him out cold. The place went fucking bananas. Because Poirier does train down here. So, you know, this is like home for him. It was an amazing, amazing fight. I loved it for Poirier. And now there's talk of him being the next fight for uh, Islam Makachev in June. Because uh, Makachev's trainer uh, tweeted out that, you know, that could be the fight. I don't know if it is. I think we have to see what happens to Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway because... Gaethje did put Poirier to sleep in their last fight and see how they come out health-wise. And, if, you know, if Gaethje wins that fight and he's healthy and he can go in June, I don't see how you don't give him that fight because he just did beat Poirier. But I'd love to see Poirier fight um, Makachev. Uh, I thought if he had lost to Benoit St. Denis, I think he would have retired. But, yeah, he was incredible. I I'm very happy to see that win. <clears throat> Another fight down on that card was um, Jack Della Maddalena against Gilbert Burns. I thought Gilbert Burns was dominating the fight. He was controlling top position. Madalena hits hard. It turns out that Madalena broke his arm in that fight. In the third round, with about two minutes to go, Burns has top position against the cage. I don't know what he did, but it seemed like he tried to advance it, and he made a mistake, which was shocking because Gilbert Burns is a jiu-jitsu, a, a, a black belt jiu-jitsu expert. And whatever he did, Madalena Madale was able to escape, flip him, get to his feet, and Gilbert Burns goes directly in for another takedown and catches a knee square, square to the face. And that just fucked him up. And basically turtled him up, and my, Della Maddalena was just hammer-fisted him out. You know, just smashed him out, stopped the fight with two minutes to go in the fight. I thought Burns was about to win that fight. And he went from about to win that fight to knocked out. Like he was busted up. I wonder if he comes back and fights again. I I'm curious. I don't know if he comes back to fight again. Um, and the final fight, now, the MVP Kevin Holland fight was embarrassing. I was very disappointed in that performance. So I'll leave that, leave that one alone. But the final fight was that Curtis Blades, Jalton Almeida fight. And I think that you're going to have the, the Curtis Blades. Almeida went for takedowns. He was basically ragdolling Blades in the first round, which was really surprising because of Blades' wrestling ability. But... In the second round, he goes for a takedown again. He doesn't even throw a punch. That's what's really – Almeida doesn't even throw a punch. Goes for a takedown again. Blades able, sprawls on the cage and just starts throwing hammers right at him, just hammering him. Knocked him out with hammer fists. And ended that streak of Almeida, and I think that we're going to probably see a Curtis Blades-Tom Aspinall rematch because Aspinall did lose to Blades, albeit it was by injury. Blades does have that W, and – He's already called out Aspinall, and I think that's the fight that we may see next at heavyweight. Overall, amazing card. Uh, Donald Trump showed up after the first fight. The place went bananas, <laughs> and people wonder why. People wonder why. Well, Miami Dade, for those of you who don't know, I mean, it's heavy Hispanic area. So if you're not familiar with Cuban people, a lot of Cuban people are Republicans, heavy Republican. But beyond that, consider the venue. The venue is MMA. And the tickets cost a fortune. So if you do the math, people are paying over $1,000 for tickets to go to this event. You're going to get a Republican contingent there. And last year was the same thing when Masvidal fought. Place went bananas. So that's always entertaining because, you know, Donald Trump acts like a star. And he, he starts he's waving. It's just... Whatever, it always it adds a level of like, why are, I was sitting by, in front of people that were in front of people that were from New York. Like, why are people going crazy? I said, because we're in Miami. It's a UFC event. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? 
Like, you, how much did your tickets cost again? <laughs> They're not free. <laughs> They're not free. So, all in all, great weekend. And then I'll kick it back to you, uh, Donald, for our last topic on on uh, last Combat one. Corner. Uh, Combat Corner, before we head out of here. Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. It's been announced it's going to be on Netflix. Um, as a classically trained boxer, I'm not going to discuss this because I'm disgusted by it. So I have no nothing to say. I'm nothing. I'm, I'm disgusted by it. Um, I think a lot of boxing fans are disgusted by it as well. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave this one alone uh, before I get upset. I'm gonna leave this one completely alone. Nick, do you have any any thoughts about uh the YouTuber versus Iron Mike Tyson? I don't. I don't have any thoughts. They won't get me. They won't get me for my seventy-seven. <laughs> They won't get me from what's it. Well, it's nah. free. It's on Netflix. Well, they ain't if you have gonna, Netflix, you can hit it. They, they definitely ain't going to get me for their Netflix prices. Actually. <laughs> but you have Netflix, don't you? I got somebody Netflix. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> it's free. It doesn't matter. Like, if you have Netflix, it's free. It's going to be on free Netflix. Well, you paid for Netflix, but that's it. Well, let me, I can see if I get somebody's password. I don't know. Netflix don't went up. <laughs> They're trying to get me to pay the five. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Netflix we know you're. We, we know you We know you're barring boozers. <laughs> nah, you know what? I actually have Netflix. I ain't gonna lie. I, I'm playing around. I actually, I actually have that. I have Netflix. I have Peacock, and I got Stars. Ooh, you're coming mm. up. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I hate it. I hate everything about it. I, but I think at this point, it's like Jake Paul. Whatever he does, people will complain about. It doesn't matter what he does. They're going to complain. So he fights MMA fighters who people say are washed up. But yet, before every MMA fighter, they said that he would get his ass kicked. They said Ben Askren would kick his ass. And he knocks him out in the first round. They said Tyron Willie would kick his ass. Tyron Willie is a trained fighter. And Tyron Willie's not 50 years old. He was 37 years old, 38 years old. N not too far removed in the tooth. I mean... Still very, very athletic and not some chump off the street. Built like a tank. And what did he do? Jake Paul busted his ass. He won that fight. They rematched. He knocked him starch out cold. Donald, I know you're a boxer. Would anyone just take a punch to the face and, like, you can, you can throw a fight. You don't throw a fight getting knocked out cold. It's too dangerous. There's ways to throw a fight and not get knocked out like that. And he got knocked out in a way that was scary. So he beats him up. Then he fights Anderson Silva. And what does everyone say again? Oh, Silva's going to whoop his ass. Silva's a great MMA UFC champion. He had just beaten Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., who granted is a washed up, but yet former boxing champion. And he beats his ass. And Anderson Silva fights Jake Paul, and, and Jake Paul drops him in that fight. You think Anderson Silva's t throwing a fight? Like, I think that when people say this type of thing and talk about guys throwing fights, it's very, very dangerous. Because one, most guys don't want to end up in prison. Because if you throw a sporting event with gambling lands, you end up in prison. Like, let's stop the bullshit. And there's no attorney on earth that's going to risk his license with some backdoor contracts, which you would never put in writing to begin with, because it would leave a paper trail of you breaking the law, committing felonies, and sit here and say, oh, yeah, they're, they're setups, they're fixes. This isn't the Logan Paul, Floyd Mayweather bullshit. This is completely different. Logan Paul fought an exhibition with Mayweather. It was a show, whatever. But then he fights Fury. So people criticize him for that. Then he fights Fury, and he loses a decision. But then he goes back and fights two other boxers, and then they say, oh, those guys really aren't boxers. Well, what do you want? A guy who has eight fights, seven fights, six fights, typically fights bums. Am I wrong, Donald? Facts, sir. Facts. Typically fights bums, built, used to build records. But Jake Paul's different because he has a following and people think it's a, it's a circus. It is a, it's a bit of a circus. But he fought a guy who was 10 and 1, knocked him out cold. Then he fought a guy who was 17 and 1, knocked him out cold. So now, and yet he's still being criticized because he's not fighting Canelo. Like, why the fuck would he? I mean, his dream would be to fight Canelo, I'm sure. But Canelo's not going to fight him. It's a waste of time. It's not going to happen. So do I think Mike Tyson maybe has some financial problems? Probably. Because it makes no, there's, 
the Dallas state of Texas, if they sanction this, should be ashamed of themselves. The man is 58 years old in June. This is supposed to be in July. He'll be 58 years old when he fights Jake Paul. And people who think that he's going to win over Jake Paul, I'm sorry, he will not. He'll get knocked out. Jake Paul's not a small dude. Jake Paul's training like crazy. People who say want to say differently, Jake Paul's training his ass off. He showed he can box. Will he beat Mike Tyson when Mike Tyson was 27? Fuck no. He'd be put through the fucking through the roof. He'd be put, put out the ring. But this is a 58-year-old man, and they keep running these bullshit clips that are clearly in fast forward, making Mike Tyson look like a destroyer. He's hitting mitts. And he's and it's going really, really fast. And then he fought Roy Jones and he and he didn't look that damn fast. So, you know, I'll watch it because we're gonna talk about it, I'm sure. And I watch all this fucking shit as it is, but I'm disgusted that it's happening and I'm sick and tired of it. Uh, I actually like Jake Paul. I when I first saw him, I thought he was a massive douchebag. He still is a massive douchebag, but I have respect for what he's doing because. All the guys that talk shit, they'll never do this. They'll never do this. And I think all these media members on national media are acting like Mike Tyson's going to knock somebody out. Get the fuck out of here. Like, stop. Yeah, could he? Is it possible? Sure. The man will have 60 seconds of gas tank. He's 58. And after that, it'll be a fucking clinic of jabs and jabs and jabs and jabs. And I expect that if it's a 10-round fight, Jake Paul will knock him out. But this whole thought that it's a fix... You go to prison for fixing fights. I'm sure fights have been fixed in the past. I know they have. But those are real boxing matches, not this shit. Not this shit. And will Mike Tyson allow himself to be knocked out on purpose? Come on. That's all I got. Yeah, guys. We're going to leave it there. I just, I, I have too much respect for the sport, too much respect for Iron Mike to, to even comment on it. So I won't. When the fight happens, I will. But um, yeah, that being said, guys, this is another what a wonderful episode of Come On Now. If you guys have final thoughts, I actually don't have any. I'm glad to be uh, able to speak about NFL free agency. I'm looking forward to next week. I think we'll have a better example, uh, no, sample size of what my Vikings will look like. So we haven't really made any moves that I'm, I'm excited about yet. So hopefully I'll have some exciting stuff to talk about next week about my Vikings because Lord knows I can't talk about my Chicago Bulls. <laughs> I can't talk about my Chicago Bulls. Uh, those are my final thoughts, guys. If you have anything before we wrap out. I got nothing today. I got one real quick thing. First, thank you, everyone. We crossed 250 subscribers and 150,000 views. Thank you. Follow us. Come on now. The pod, Come on now podcast on Facebook and uh, Instagram and come on now pod on uh, Twitter and TikTok. But I got one final thing. And it's involving my comments about JJ McCarthy and white quarterback privilege. And I am blown away. Well, I shouldn't be blown away because I should expect it. I look like a white person. I am a white person. Race is race. Culture is culture. My family's from Cuba. Part of my family's from Italy. Father was born in Cuba. So I'm first generation. I was, did that make me a first generation American? Is that what you call it? Yes. Is that correct? Okay. So I look at, I look at things from a, a wider view. What the fuck is the deal with the white people, white Americans in this country fucking so triggered by the term white privilege? You fucking have it. I have it. If I go to Kansas, do I look like a Cuban? No, I look like a fucking Irishman with a red beard. When I get pulled over by a cop, I'm a white dude. So why the fuck do people not think that white privilege translates over to football? How many quarterbacks in the NFL right now are black in a league that's 75% black? 10? How many coaches? Six? There was three last year. There's six now. And we're going to sit here and be delusional and sit here and say that J.J. McCarthy from Michigan is not getting white privilege as a quarterback? The guy that threw for less than 200 yards in five of his last six games of the season last year and whenever he played a good team, he didn't do shit? Jumping him over Michael Penix? who was one of the best players in the country last year, and the only reason Washington was in the national championship was because of Michael Penix. Yeah, I got people argue with me on our, po on our post, and you saw it, Nick. I mean, giving me all kinds of deflections. Deflect, deflect. Oh, well, Taylor Williams is the number one pick. J. 
Jaden Daniels was ranked in the top four. So they earned it on the field. No one, sit here, no one was sitting here and saying that black quarterbacks haven't been drafted, number one. The whole topic is about white quarterbacks getting a privilege that black quarterbacks don't typically get. Yes, did one, get it, did one black QB get the workout warrior award last year? Anthony Richardson? Absolutely. Did he deserve to be drafted? Fuck no. Is he going to bust out in four years? Yeah, he'll be out of the league in four years. These teams consistently think that they can change and fix guys that are not good in college. They keep doing it, and it's exhausting. And when I listen to these people from Michigan primarily, because they they, the first thing they give it away is, you must be an Ohio State fan. When you both know I was cheering for Michigan. I can't stand Ohio State. I'm not a Michigan State fan. I'm not an Ohio State fan. I was cheering for Michigan. J.J. McCarthy is an average quarterback. He's not a star. And you want to draft him in the top six? You're going to go get yourself Daniel Jones. You're going to get yourself Mitchell Trubisky. I read, a, I read the profile of Mitchell Trubisky. Let me ask you two guys real quick before we go. Mitchell Trubisky, his positives were upside. That was one of his positives, his upside. What does that mean? I don't know. You know what I said for his negatives? He lacks experience. Doesn't that mean the same thing? Yep. They somehow made the same thing, a positive and a negative for Mitchell Trubisky. And then at the same time, mind you, the Tar Heels, UNC, played in the same offense that Texas Tech had. Shotgun, spread offense. Patrick Mahomes in that same draft pass. Patrick Mahomes graded out higher than Trubisky in everything. And somehow Mitchell Trubisky is the second pick in the draft. And Mahomes is the 10th. Explain that. Explain it. You have general managers who, whether they want to ever admit it or not, have internal inherent biases because for many, many years, black QBs were said to be unintelligent. Am I wrong? Nope. Warren Moon dealt with that shit 35 years ago, 40 years ago, whatever it was, 35 years ago. CFL legend. Yeah. Like, all these guys, Randall Cunningham dealt with it. Uh, what did they say? Lamar Jackson scored a 13 on the Wonderlick. You know what they talk about? Oh, my God, his Wonderlick score. Since when does Wonderlick play football? He might not be able to read a book. I don't give a fuck. Can he read a football playbook? I don't care about whether he can fucking do a test in math or whatever the wonder lick is. It doesn't matter to me. Can he play football? And on every level, that man played football at a high, high level and was drafted behind multiple guys. Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, Josh Rosen. Like, what are we talking about? Josh Rosen's not in the league anymore. And they'll wow. say he's, he's slender and small. You know what? Lamar Jackson is the same size as Baker Mayfield. But Lamar is small, and Baker's the number one pick in the draft. I'm not arguing Baker being the number one pick in the draft because he was a Heisman Trophy winner and was a monster in college. But Rosen was a fucking ineffective bum who didn't win. Donald was okay. And Lamar Jackson was the Heisman Trophy fucking winner. And we're sitting here acting like this man can't play football? Every time there's a comparison of a black QB to a white QB... The one person replied to me, what about when a white QB is compared to a white QB? Do they ever mention intelligence? Never. Every time you compare a black QB to a white QB, the first thing that comes out of anyone's mouth is, are they intelligent enough? What is their intelligence level? Are you fucking kidding me? Patrick Mahomes had one line where it said, he needs to learn. Learn means he's in, he's, he doesn't learn. Really? He needs to learn something. And, and for Trubisky, it was the same shit, but it was not stated as learn. It was needs experience. One is negative, one is positive. And that's written in the, by the exact same guy in the exact same freaking profile. Same year. I read them both. I wanted to compare them. The negatives on black quarterbacks are like this. The negatives on white ones are like this, and then they're rewritten in a way where it makes the black QB drops his ass down and it makes the white QB look like this. So all you Michigan fans who got pissed off, you're fucking fools. Look it up. It's been proven for many, many years, over and over again. You can point out three to me. Trey Lance, who didn't deserve to get picked where he got picked. Anthony Richardson, and there might be one, maybe, I mean, hell, look at where Justin Fields fell to. Justin Fields looked like a world beater in that playoff. And then he's the 15th pick. 
That was, that was the pick, right, Donald? Yes. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. I didn't look up to see how many white guys got picked before him. How many times, how many Alabama QBs were white got picked and gotten flamed out? Matt Jones has been a disaster, and they've been pushing that guy up the fucking rank. They pushed so hard to get him drafted. So I'm sick and tired of hearing the bullshit. White privilege for quarterbacks exists. You don't like it? Go fuck yourselves. Michael Penix is better than J.J. McCarthy, and I'll bet anybody right now that Michael Penix will be a star in the NFL and J.J. McCarthy will be out of the league or a backup in five years. I'm done. Uh, Justin Fields was number 11, but still, okay. it was pretty Who went before him? A lot of bumps, but uh, he, was, no. he was 11. That being said, guys, uh, we are going to wrap up this colorful, entertaining well, episode. To be honest, um, Justin hasn't up. proved anything either yet, so go ahead. Go ahead. He Let's hasn't. Nick, he hasn't. Give him stability, Nick. We'll see yeah. when he has stability. Oh, yeah, you know who got picked ahead of Justin Fields? Zach Wilson. <laughs> he got picked high. <laughs> Number two, ahead of Justin Fields. He got picked really And you're high. telling me that Zach Wilson was a better college quarterback than Justin Fields? Come oh, on, man. His upside. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. There's another example right there. Upside. It, it, interesting. All right, guys. We're going to wrap up this episode. Um, Rudy has already told you guys where to find us. Rudy, one more time before we head out. So Facebook, and, Facebook and Instagram. Come on now, podcast. Twitter and TikTok, come on now, pod. Follow right, us, like, subscribe, and share it with your friends, baby. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great one. See you guys same time next week.